back to another video and today I'm going to teach you how to download and use the Roblox Woman Rig. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is go to the link I have in the description. Click on the link and you should see something like this. Now to download the Roblox Woman Rig, simply press the download button. If a pop-up ad comes up, simply close it. And there you have it. Your Roblox Woman Rig should start downloading on the bottom of your screen. If you don't have a folder where you keep your GFX resources, I recommend moving the Woman Rig to your desktop. To do so, open your files and go to the place where your Roblox Woman Rig downloaded. This will usually be in your download files. Now press on the Woman Rig file and drag it to your desktop. And there you have it! That's how you download the Roblox Woman Rig. The next part of the tutorial will teach you how to use it. The first thing you're going to want to do to start making your GFX based off of the Woman Rig is go to your Roblox browser. Once you're on a Roblox browser, simply press Create. Now press Create New Game and select Classic Faceplate. Scroll down and press Create Game. Now, this next part does require you to have Roblox Studio installed, but you don't need to worry about installing that or anything as Roblox Studio will automatically install when you open Roblox. Now press Edit and press Open Roblox. Again, if you don't have Roblox Studio, this is the time when Roblox Studio will start downloading. I already have Roblox Studio, so Roblox is going to immediately launch me into Roblox Studio. Once you're in Roblox Studio, this is what everything should look like. Go to the Toolbox and change the mode to Plugins. Now type in Load Character. Now click on the first result and press install. I already have this plugin installed, so that's why it's grayed out right now. Once you have the load character plugin installed, go to plugins and then press on load character plugin. Type in your name. Mine is Cheesy Cheesy Ella. And make sure that you have Spawn at Origin on. If you don't have Spawn at Origin on, your character will be all over the place once imported into Blender. Spawn R6. Now you can close the Load Character plugin and use WASD to position your camera to be facing your Roblox character. Now click on your Roblox character in the Explorer, right click it, and press export selection. Now you're going to want to export it to, for example, a folder that you hold your GFX resources in, but if you don't have a folder like that, you can just save it to your desktop. I, however, do have a folder like this where I save my GFXs to, so I'm going to press on this folder and name it. Once you're done naming it, press save. Now you can close Roblox Studio. It doesn't really matter if you save or discard the changes. I'm just going to press discard. Now you're going to want to download Blender. To do so, press the link I have in my description. Once you've pressed the link in my description, you should see a page that looks like this. To download Blender 2.79, press Download Blender 2.79 Be Old. Now you're going to want to click on the file that matches with your computer. Once you've clicked on that file, it should start downloading on the bottom of your screen, and then you're going to want to follow the installation process. I already have Blender downloaded, so I'm not going to show this process to you. Once you have Blender downloaded and all ready to go, you should see something like this when you've opened the app. Now, my Blender may look a little bit different from yours since I have a pink theme installed. But other than that, the only changes that I have is that my stuff is pink and your stuff will most likely be gray. Click anywhere to get out of this screen 
And now you should see a cube. To get rid of this cube, press delete on your keyboard, then X. Now go to file and press open. Find your woman rig and press open blender file. Now press shift F on your keyboard and use WASD to navigate your camera into a comfortable position. Now what you're gonna wanna do is delete the head. To do so, press a B on your keyboard and drag your mouse down to select the head. Now press delete on your keyboard, then X. Now what you're gonna wanna do is go to these three lines over here and drag them down. This basically duplicates your original screen. Now go to this cube over here and press node editor. Now your node editor should probably be blank and to fix this, go to your original screen and right click on all of the limbs. To do so, right click on one limb, i.e. arm, and press shift while clicking on the others. Now go back to your node editor and scroll in until you find image texture. Once you've found image texture, press this file button over here. And now go to the folder where you exported your Roblox character to. Now what you're going to want to do is select your character texture. Your character texture should have your username, a number, and then text on it. You're going to want to select the texture that has the highest number in value on it. Once you've selected it, press open image. Now to get rid of this duplicated screen, go to these three lines over here and drag them up. Now you're obviously going to want to have an actual head. To add a head to your character, press file, then import, then wavefront obj. Now go to, again, the folder where you saved your Roblox character to and select that file. Make sure that it has obj next to it. Now press import obj. Now use these arrows to navigate your character to the left, right, up, down. What you're going to want to do is move your character away from the woman rig. It doesn't really matter what direction. Now right click on all of the body parts. And again, use the method I taught you earlier of shift then click and shift then click to select multiple body parts once you've selected all of the body parts press delete on your keyboard now you should have something that looks like this press b on your keyboard and drag your mouse to select the head and all of its accessories now what you're going to want to do is use these tools over here to move your head to fit with your woman rig. I know that sounds a little bit confusing, but basically all you have to do is watch what I'm doing as it's very straightforward. Once you've moved your imported head onto your rig, you can start to position your Roblox woman rig. Now, this is where all of these circles, zigzags, um, rectangles come in. So to bend this bottom part of the arm, all I would have to do is right click this circle. The more you play around with this, the more straightforward it gets and the more easy to understand it becomes. To do this, I would right click this bigger circle over here and I would use the red, blue, and green lines to move it to be close to my face like so. And there you have it. I'm done positioning the first arm and it was that simple. Now I want to move this second arm to be sitting on my torso. To do so, I'm going to follow the same process. I'm going to right click on this circle over here and I'm going to use this red line to move the bottom of the arm up. Now I'm going to right click on this bigger circle and I'm going to use the blue line to move it more into my torso. Now you can use these arrow keys to move your arm up, down, left, or right. I'm going to keep it like this. Of course, you can always make some extra adjustments if you don't like how the GFX turned out. The next thing that I like to do is tilt the head a little bit. To do so, 
right click on any part of the head, i.e. hair, press a B on your keyboard and drag your mouse to select everything on the head. Now use the green curved line over here to tilt the head just a bit. And now use the arrow keys to move it back to where it originally was. And there you have it. That's how you download and use the Roblox Woman rig. Now I would render my image and the next part of the tutorial is actually optional to watch, but it shows my personal favorite render settings, i.e. my resolution. The first settings I would like to customize is ambient occlusion and back face culling. Basically, this will make your GFX look much more shaded and overall the quality of it will be better. Now I go to this camera box over here and I change the mode to PNG. This allows you to make the background transparent so you can put it on pictures and you can edit it, etc, etc. To make the background transparent, scroll down and press transparent. Now go to this second box over here, I don't really know what it is, and press denoising. This will make your GFX be much less pixelated in the final rendered image. Now go to this bar over here and press camera. Press view, then camera, and now press shift F and use WASD to position your camera. So basically what's in this little box of the camera, your GFX will hold. For example, if I position my camera like this at the floor, my rendered image will only have the floor. Going back to this camera box over here, you can change your resolution to a higher number, but usually 1920 by 1080 px works best for me, um, but the higher the resolution, the stronger your computer will have to be, but also the better quality your GFX will be. Again, I like to keep my settings at this though, it doesn't take a long time to render, and the quality is decent. The next thing that I'd like to do is customize the lamp. To do so, go to this box over here and press point. Now use the arrow keys to move your lamp to be in front of your character so that it emits enough light for your character to be well lit. You can test and experiment how much light the lamp gives off by pressing this ball over here and then pressing rendered. With this, you can see where the light is on your character. Once you're done customizing the lamp, go to this camera box over here and simply press render. Once your image is done rendering, press image, then press save as image and save it to wherever you would like. This is going to be the end of my video. Um, thank you so much for watching. Have a good day. See you in next week's video and bye.